giant chunks of the Earth's mantle falling and causing quakes across southeastern United States. This is from very ancient geology about 65 million, 70 million years ago, according to researchers. This is from Daily Mail on Bended Reality. The southeastern United States, hit by a series of strange, unexplained earthquakes. Most recently, one of them was a 5.8 earthquake in 2011 near Mineral, Virginia. It shook the nation's capital as well. Researchers have been baffled and believe the area should be relatively quiet in terms of seismic activity. Most of the earthquakes we have, we know, are on the West Coast. But uh, this is located in the interior of the North American plate. This is basically around the New Madrid seismic zone, where the Mississippi River flows all the way up to St. Lawrence River in Quebec. So uh, this uh, far away from plate boundaries, where earthquakes usually occur, now they believe that quakes could be caused by pieces of the Earth's mantle that is moving and sinking uh, towards the southeast from the map that we have. Researchers believe the quakes could be caused by pieces of the Earth's mantle that's breaking off, sinking into the planet on the east side of the, uh, the east coast of the United States and the affected area shown in the map. They say pieces of the mantle have most likely been breaking off from this area uh, in the past uh, 65, since last 65 million years ago. And the map shows the study area in detail. So this is the geology of the uh, eastern United States. Most of us don't know what's happening there. But this new study found pieces of the mantle under this region have been periodically breaking off, sinking down into the earth. And this thins and weakens the remaining plate, making it more prone to slipping that causes earthquakes. The study authors conclude this process is ongoing and likely to produce more earthquakes in the future. This is basically, uh, as we know, Mississippi all the way to uh, St. Lawrence River, basically the New Madrid seismic zone, which is actually a rift valley. It's, it should be called New Madrid rift zone. I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. The, uh, our ideas support the view that this seismicity will continue due to unbalanced stresses in the plate, said Burke Buriol, seismologist at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. He's the lead author of this new study. The seismic zones that are active will continue to be active for some time, he says. The study was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth, a journal of the American Geophysical Union. The team wrote, based on distinct variations in the geometry and thickness of the lithospheric mantle and foundering lithosphere, we propose that piecemeal delamination has occurred beneath the region throughout the Cenozoic, removing a significant amount of reworked deformed mantle lithosphere. Compared to earthquakes near plate boundaries, for example, near the West Coast, we have the uh, North American plate uh, overriding the Pacific plate, which is subducting. So compared to earthquakes near plate boundaries, earthquakes in the middle of plates are not well understood, and the hazards they pose are difficult to quantify. A new finding could help scientists here better understand the dangers these earthquakes present. And uh, as we know, currently the Southeast United States is more than 1,056 miles from the nearest edge of the North American plate which covers all of North America, of course, Greenland and parts of the Atlantic and Arctic oceans. But the region was built over the past billion years by period, uh, periods of accretion when new material is added to the plate and rifting when plates split apart. And researchers initially suspected ancient fault lines or pieces of old plates extending deep in the mantle following episodes of accretion and rifting could be responsible for earthquakes in the area. Biriol said this region has not been active for a long time and we're intrigued by what was going on and how we can link these activities to structures in the deeper parts of the earth. Biriol said this was interesting finding because everybody thought 
that this is a stable region and we would expect regular plate thickness. At first they thought the thick old rocks could be remnants of ancient tectonic plates. This is the map of Mineral Virginia where we see the 5.8 magnitude earthquake shaking from this magnitude 5.8 earthquake near Mineral Virginia. August 23rd, 2011 was felt by more people than any other earthquake in U.S. history. This is according to the U.S. Geological Survey. And researchers now believe the quake could be caused by pieces of the Earth's mantle breaking off, sinking into the Earth, as uh, mantles do. Now, but the shapes and locations of the thick and thin regions suggest a different explanation. The, through past rifting and accretion, areas of the North American plate have become more dense and were pulled down into uh, the mantle through gravity. At certain times, the densest part broke off from the plate and sank into the warm asthenosphere below. The asthenosphere, being lighter and more buoyant, surged in to fill the void created by the missing pieces of the mantle, eventually cooling and becoming the thin young rocks in the images. The researchers concluded this process is likely what caused earthquakes in this otherwise stable region, when the pieces of the mantle break off, the plate above them becomes thinner and more prone to slip, slip around, along the ancient fault lines. Typically, the thicker the plate, the stronger it is, and the less likely to produce earthquakes. According to Bayerial, pieces of the mantle have most likely been breaking off from underneath the plate since at least 65 million years ago. So this has been going on for quite a long time. Because the researchers found fragments of hard rocks at shallow depths, this process is still ongoing and likely to continue in the future, potentially leading to more quakes in the region, he said. And by coincidence, we're right now we'll go to the map showing us that we've had a 3.3 magnitude earthquake in uh, South Carolina, and about three hours later, a 2.5, and the 3.3 was uh, basically reported by USGS by over uh, 3,000 people, 3,106. Let's take a look at the map. So here we are in North Carolina. This was 27th at 918, and this was about midnight, about three hours later. Uh, the 3.5, 3.3, sorry, was felt by 3,106 people. And uh, this basically is in, is in the same zone that we were just talking about. Uh, here we are, okay. Okay, Great Smoky Mountains. And uh, this is the basically the New Madrid seismic zone around here. And as you can see, this is the area of the Mississippi, uh, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, uh, St. Lawrence River. And let's remember that this here, the Great Lakes have a mantle plume underneath that's been there for about 990 million years, about a billion years ago. And um, there's magma under there. It's a horseshoe-shaped magma. The western part goes through uh, South Dakota, Nebraska, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, and then goes uh, west into uh, Texas, New Mexico. And the eastern part goes like this, along the uh, New Madrid seismic zone area. Okay, we've had a lot of uh, earthquakes in Canada too, even though, there we go. These are the Canada earthquakes, even though the seismic Berkeley doesn't show them. Canada shows them, as you can see on the west and, of course, even on the east. Okay, what's this one here? This is in Maine, 3.1 uh, at the beginning of December. Okay, uh, so you can see that there's a lot of earthquakes there as well. And this is the area that we're talking about. Just like uh, the New Madrid seismic zone is basically the New Madrid Rift Valley from what we read many months ago concerning what the geologists have been telling us. So this is it. Let's go to the shake map. And um, as we said, they really don't know where the fault lines there are because there's not that many earthquakes there. But this is the area that we're talking about. And let's go to the aerial. And you can see basically uh, this is, uh, there's uh, 10 times more shaking on the east than on the west coast. And if you extend, of course, USGS stops the frequencies there, but if you extend them, 
they probably go all the way up here, Richmond, Virginia. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, Jacksonville, Florida felt this as well. And um, going back to this, uh, let's go in a little bit. We may be able to get that earthquake, the uh, big one, 3.3 and 2.5. Okay, the 3.3 and... Oh, they don't have the details, but of course, many times we've read that you can feel the earthquakes there because it's soft sediment soil. You can feel this 10 times more than you feel it in this 3.5, 3.3 uh, magnitude earthquake on the West Coast. So all of you there, please be very careful. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.